All right, so hello everyone. Um, so this particular problem was given to me by one of my subscribers. Uh, this is from the actual uh, CBT um, NCES practice exam, EE practice exam. So thank you very much. You know who you are. So I'll be solving this problem right right now. Okay, so the question here is to find the value of IC. So that's the question. So IC in milliamps. That's our question. So all the values are given here, register and capacitors values also are given, but I didn't put it there for a reason. I'll tell you later. But here we have to first find out what kind of transistor we're dealing with. Is it a BJT? Is it a um, MOSFET or JFET? And the only way you can tell is just to look at the the configuration here and go to your handbook and you can kind of tell already right away that this is a, a BJT NPN BJT because of the configuration so it's the same thing now the first thing that you do is to put out your base your collector and your emitter pinpoints basically that's what I call them okay so I'll put um, a red color here okay so this would be my B so this will help you basically find out your IVs and etc etc so this is my base uh, this is my C collector point and this is my E now whenever I'm given a um, transistor problem or any problem actually I kind of see question myself what thro throws me off so here is the capacitor that throw me off basically I'm like what am I gonna do with this but then I've noticed that we have a DC circuit and remember when you have a DC circuit your capacitors act like um, open circuits and your inductors act like short circuits so you have to remember that in any circuit whether it's a transistor circuit whether it's a um, just regular resistor circuit whenever you have capacitors in a DC um, bias your capacitors act like open circuit so we can go ahead and basically um, erase the capacitors because you know we don't need them anymore because they act like open circuit okay so when you don't have anything going through here then we can literally erase this part we don't need it anymore and the capacitor here as well and you'll see that the circuit W is much much easier and they, they do that all the time to kind of throw you off because when you look at this in your exam you're like oh my god what am I gonna do but we can go ahead and erase this part as well this whole thing because there's nothing going through here is open right so this whole part is gone and you can see how simple the circuit becomes all right gone we don't need capacitors here at all because it's DC okay so now we have to identify our um, currents okay let me use a uh, yeah red color all right so my IC is the current going through the 600 um, ohm here so this is my IC again I'm following um, the configuration here so you see your IE going through your emitter etc etc so my IE is the current going through here the 500 ohm and my beta is the current the uh, I mean my IB is a current coming in here or is it out or in yes in okay okay so now that I've found out what that is um, and I'm also given I remember that um, my VB is in the problem uh, VB was given as 0.7 uh, so what's VB, VBE, excuse me, VBE is the voltage uh, between here and here, basically between B and E. So that's here, that's your VBE is given as 0.7. It's tip is ma majority of the time is actually 0.7, even if it's not given, even if they didn't tell you that. But yeah, most of it, when it's given it's 0.7 for the most part so that's given already so that's point so that's the voltage between point here and this point here so that's kinda like over here okay so how do we proceed with this question so 
let's go back to the handbook and see assumptions here so these are the mathematical relationship that's given for when you have a BJT and so we have IC is equal to beta IB and we have IC is equal to alpha IE now in the problem I am not given beta nor am I given alpha so my assumption is that they are equal to 1 remember I think it is a problem that I've, that I've done in the past where I kind of mentioned that there so if beta is not given alpha is not given and there's no mention of it then you assume is equal to one so you kind of is not part of the problem basically so you just assume that it's, it's it's one so you don't include them in your calculations at all because it's not given anyway okay so we can go ahead and put IC is equal to IE we use a white color so IC is equal to IE which is also equal to um, uh, IB, if you will. I mean, yeah, because it's not even given at all. Uh, well, because, yeah, IC is equal to IB, and if you assume that beta is equal to 1, then yes. So if you find what um, IE is, or if you find what IB is, then we know what IC is is and now there's no register here within IB so it's kind of like a stretch to even try to find that IB so let's find IE so if you find IE then we know what IC is so let's go ahead and get started with that so what's IE so IE is a current across the 500 register so um, using Ohm's law we know that I is equal to V over R right so we have V whatever the voltage across that is so we can call it VE that's the voltage across here uh, I, I probably should put a uh, plus minus sign here so you can kind of see what I'm talking with the voltage I'm talking about so it's VE over IE okay but what's that voltage I mean excuse me RE uh, I'm sorry V over R So, what's RE? We already know that's 500 ohms, so we can put that there. We don't have to. And what's my voltage? We don't know what the voltage is. However, we know that the voltage across here, VB, we can call that VB. Uh, we know what VBE is. That's 0.7. So, um, the voltage here, this voltage, let me use a different color the voltage going from here to here that's my VE but this is my VB and this is my VE and this is my VBE I'll just put that there my point seven that's from here to here to here this is my 0.7 volt so to find VE just by simple math you can tell that it's VB minus 0.7 so if you want to find this then it's that minus the little voltage over here just simple um, uh, voltage laws or something like that right just simple math so your VE is equal to VB minus 0.7 okay so what do I what don't I know here in this equation right here VB VB is the only thing I don't know now if you notice here we have a voltage source well yeah we have a voltage source that's the VCC because VCC is the voltage across the whole does the source basically that's across the whole circuit uh, is as if we had um, uh, basically as if we had a, a voltage source basically and then we have a parallel circuit between the register 1k and then the 2k that's kinda like if we were to rewrite it that's basically what, what, what we have here so your VCC is the voltage across the whole thing 
So now you can use a voltage divider because you have a parallel circuit and then you have a, a voltage source and then you want to find a voltage across a particular resistor. So we want to find here a voltage across uh, across this particular resistor over here, the 1K. So voltage divider says that if you want to find that, so your VB is that particular um, resistance, so that's your 1K, that's voltage divider, over the the, resist the total resistance, which is 1K plus 2K, times the actual voltage source, which is 30 volt. So we know what VB is. Now this is equal to 30K over 3K, which is 10 volt. And so we found our problem. That's it. So um, now we know that uh, VB, i.e., well, let me use a. Finally, so IE, which is equal to IC, this is equal to 10 minus 0.7 over 500 and this is in ohm so 10 point I uh, mean 10 minus 0.7 that's 9.3 over 500 this is equal to let me use my calculator point zero uh, .0186 but this is an amp. The question was in milliamps, so of course one, two, three. So that's uh, equals to ten. I mean eighteen point six milliamps. And that's it. And that's your answer. Now, if if it wasn't for the explanation, you know, yada yada, that I would have done this within the time limit of the actual exam in the actual exam. So it's not that difficult at all. Once you find out that you have to eliminate your capacitors because you have a DC circuit, you put out your base and your um, collector and your emitter. You put out the voltages that are given, and you go from your actual assumptions. So I always start here. Always start from here. So if beta was given that then we would have included in it. But it's not given so we assume is you always assume that it's equal to one. But so if it's given sometimes they tell you that beta is equal to hundred or two hundred then of course of course you have to put include that in there. You can't ignore that uh, any value actually that's given. So but here is not given so we assume that is not there at all. Okay? So that's how we started with the um, and the problem over here. Now, don't get me wrong, I have the, the solution, but it's completely different from the way I did it. Um, they went, uh, there's, it's kind of, I don't know, well, it's not different. I mean, we still have the same answer at the end, but if you see it, you, you, you kind of be like, oh, you know, how did it do it? Like, it's complicated, but it's not really complicated. The way they did it was they put the beta in there, and then at the end um, of the answer, they assume it was one, so they cancel it out, etc., etc. But I feel like this is a lot easier. That's how I always start a BJT problem or transistor problem generally, and I've never had any issues with you know solving any transistor problem at all. You know, it's very very simple actually. It may seem complicated, but it's very very easy once you get a hand of it. Once you put out your your values. Your, it's systematic basically. You put out your um, your your values, and then you identify what's what, especially the voltages. Sometimes people get confused. What's VBE, you know, or what's my VE, what's my VB, uh, etc. The the book, I mean, the solution they call it VBB, but you can call it any any anything you you know you want. Doesn't matter really. So that's kind of where the confusion is. Sometimes. Uh, students they assume that VCC the voltage is across here. No, the VCC is the actual voltage source for entire circuit. Sometimes also I've seen um, my classmates they used to confuse. Oh, what's my VE? Like you know, it's the uh, the voltage across your emitter going to ground. 
you know what I mean? So sometimes also they confuse what's there, uh, the VB, but it's typically the the voltage across the resistance going through the base all the way to the ground as well. So it's kind of systematic. If you have any questions, let me know and I'll be, I'll be glad to help. Thanks.